All right, guys, here we are again. I have another uh, exciting episode of Uncle Starach's uh, enthalpy values. So um, the next topic in the packet's called Hess's Law, but before I get to that, I just want to make sure I explain something. Now, I would have explained this in class had we been meeting for classes, and it would have been a lot easier, but I want to explain just this one part because it's a little bit confusing. Now, up until this point, I told you when you balance an equation, you need to balance them with a coefficient, right? And the definition of a coefficient is a whole number that's placed in front of a substance in order to balance the equation. Okay, which means we could not balance with things like 9.5, all right, or 10.5, or whatever it might be. All right, well, guess what? Now we can balance equations with using halves and decimals, all right? Because here's why, all right? I want to start with the blue here, and then I'm going to erase it, then talk about Hess's Law. Or I was going to just talk about Hess's Law, and then I was like, you know what? I better explain this just in case. Okay. So here you have an equation that is very simple. This is kind of what happened in the Hindenburg, all right? Hindenburg was full of hydrogen gas. Of course, hydrogen is not H. It's H2. It's a diatomic. Whenever you burn something, you need oxygen. Oxygen's another diatomic, O2. And then you yield or you will produce either water vapor or... Well, it's mostly going to be water vapor. Okay. So you get this equation here. Now, this is how you would balance it. And when that happens... Two moles of hydrogen gas plus one mole of oxygen gas will produce two moles of water. And the heat given off by that equation is 483.6 kilojoules. That's the amount of heat. And it's negative because it's going from the system to the surroundings. All right. Well, think about it. If you could burn two moles of hydrogen... Well, then you can sure burn one mole of hydrogen. However, if you're only burning one mole of hydrogen, then you only need one half a mole of O2. See, that's why you can balance now with fractions, because these numbers here indicate the number of moles that are being used. This is the kilojoules from the balanced equation here, all right? So if you burn two moles of hydrogen gas versus one mole of hydrogen gas, you're halving the amount that you're burning, so you're gonna end up having the amount of heat given off, right? If you can burn a gallon of gasoline in your car, you can burn a half a gallon of gasoline in your car, right? Same thing here, okay? Now, what happens is this equation here, the first one, if I flipped it around and instead I wanted to do two moles of water, uh, well, we'll keep it in the gas phase, I guess. I can't really write like this. Um, and I want to run an electrical current through it via electrolysis, and I want to produce the hydrogen gas, the H2, and the O2 gas. Okay. This kind of reaction requires energy to be put in to the system. But if you notice, the amounts are still the same. I'm taking two moles of water. I'm going to run an electrical current through it to split it into the hydrogen and oxygen gas. That requires energy. How much energy? The exact same amount of energy that it would release. So... Instead of it being negative, it's positive. It requires that amount of energy, all right? And this whole thing that I just kind of showed you is going to uh, lead, lead us into uh, what's called Hess's Law, all right? And Hess's Law basically says this. If you know the enthalpy values for two equations or three equations or four equations you can actually figure out the enthalpy from a different equation based off of those enthalpy values or heat values. And they can be ascertained simply by adding all the equations together. 
but you have to have it in the right stoichiometry. That's very important because two moles of propane are going to give off less heat than one mole of propane or however you want to word it. Okay, so hopefully you understood this here in the blue. And I'm going to erase the blue because I want to talk a little bit about Hess's Law. Now, I'm going to give you some strategies, but just like balancing equations, the strategies do not always work. I like to do it like this. All right, so what this means is I have two moles of carbon burning in oxygen will produce two moles of carbon monoxide, and the delta H value is negative 221 kilojoules. Okay, well, equation two, by the way, the E1 means equation one, E2 means equation two, okay? So equation two, you have carbon dioxide breaking down into carbon monoxide and one half of a mole of oxygen that would require 283 kilojoules. I should probably put like a positive sign here, maybe. Plus 283. All right. Okay. So we got positive 283 kilojoules for that to happen. All right. Now, based off of that information, I want to see if we can figure out what the enthalpy value is for this. All right. So here's how it works. At the end, the only things you want left are C plus O2 yielding CO2. Okay, so here's how I attack these kind of problems. And it might work, and it might not work. All right, but hopefully by the end, everything falls into place. There are some more difficult ones. There are some easier ones. This would be more of an easier one, I guess. Okay, so let's see. I want to go to the equation that has carbon in it, um, carbon on its own. All right, the equation that has carbon on its own is equation one. All right, it's got C, all right? Don't worry about the two yet. It has C by itself. All right, when I'm looking at this equation here, I have carbon on the left side or reactant side of the arrow. Equation one also has carbon on the reactant side of the arrow. Now, that's a good thing. The problem is... It's two moles of carbon and I only need one. All right, well, here's how I'm going to fix that. If I just divide equation one by two, all right, instead of having a two, a one, and a two, I'm gonna cut everything in half. All right, so if I cut everything in half, this is what my equation one is going to look like. Instead of two moles of C, it's gonna be one mole of C. Instead of one mole of O2, it's going to become one half of a mole of O2. And instead of producing two moles of carbon monoxide, it's only going to produce one mole of carbon monoxide. Okay. Kind of like this. I just painted like the bar top here. I'm trying to be careful because I don't want to nick it all up. It looks really nice. You know what I mean? Okay. So let's see. Two got halved. One got halved and two got halved, all right. Well, if I half the reactants and half the products, I need to half the heat energy value that is given off by the equation. So instead of it being negative 221, the delta H1 is going to change to 221 divided by two. It's at 110.5 kilojoules negative. Okay. All right, let's see. Okay, now look. I needed to find C, and I have C. All right, let's go to... Uh, now, oh, well, here's another thing, too. Once you use the equation, you lose it. You cannot use it again. Sometimes you use it, and you don't even change it. But that doesn't mean you didn't use it. It just means... You used it as is. You didn't need to alter it at all. All right, so now this equation one is off the boards. I can't use it anymore because I changed it down here. I got carbon on my reactant side. I want carbon on the reactant side. Well, there's only one more equation left to use, and that's equation two. So look, I have O2 and CO2 here, right? Well, I need CO2 as a product. I need it to be on the right side of the arrow. And I need one mole of it because I don't have a coefficient. 
Well, look, equation two has one mole of carbon dioxide. That's good. The problem is, in equation two, it's on the reactant side. My equation is calling for it on the product side. All right, so here's how we will fix that. We're going to take equation two and flip it around. All right, and when I flip it around, this is what happens. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the reactants, or in this case, the reactant, and bring it to the product side. And I'm going to take the products and bring them to the reactant side. All right, so let's see what happens when I do that. My equation two is going to become CO plus a half, O2, will produce CO2. Okay. Now my marker is looking like a Halloween. It's a black and orange mixed together. <laughs> okay? All right. So look, I took the CO2. I brought it to the product side. I took the carbon monoxide and the half mole of O2 that were on the product side and brought it to the reactant side. So what I need to do now, if I flipped the equation around, that means I need to flip the sign of the equation. Instead of it being 283 kilojoules positive, it's going to be negative 283 kilojoules. Okay? Kind of like that. Now, now let's see what we got. All right. Up oh, CO2. I need that to be a product. And I have it as a product. That's good. Right there. Let's see what else. Um, okay, I need a whole mole of O2, right? So there's, a, there's an imaginary one there. Yes? That's a bad one. There's an imaginary one there. So, what do we got? We have a half of a mole, a, a half of, a mole of O2 on the reactant side here, and another half of a mole of O2 on the reactant side here. This is a total of one mole of O2. And that's what I need, one mole of O2. So now I have everything that I need, but there's one more important thing. Every substance that's a compound has something called an enthalpy of formation. That's the next thing that we're gonna do. Elements, pure elements, enthalpy of formation is zero, okay? So what happens is, the amount of energy it needs that needs to go into producing carbon monoxide is the same amount of energy you need for carbon dioxide to react. So what happens is, if you have a substance on the right side of your arrow, on the product side, and you have that same substance on the left side of the arrow or the reactant side, those heat values will cancel each other out, okay? So, the way I kind of break it down into layman's terms is opposite sides cancel. The things, you're, the things that you don't want, you want to be on opposite sides. The things that you do want will be in your third equation here, okay? I have C. I'm looking for C. I need O2. I have O2. I'm looking for CO2. I have CO2. Everything else is canceled out. Once that happens... All you have to do to get the delta H3 value is add these two numbers together, okay? So the delta H value for the reaction is going to be 283 plus 110.5, and you're going to end up with negative 393.5 kilojoules, and that would be the answer. Oh, and by the way, I used that equation, so I need to lose it, okay? The things on opposite sides can cancel. If they're on the same side, and when I say the same side, I mean the same side of the arrow, you can actually add them together. So I have a half of a mole O2 here and a half of a mole O2 here. That makes one mole of O2 on the reactant side, and that was what I'm looking for. Okay? So, kids, there is your basics of the basics of the basics of Hess's Law. Okay, going to have a live stream tomorrow, a live stream, I guess a live meet at, uh, I think it's noon. I think I changed it to noon just to give you guys a, uh, a little more, see, see if people who are having time issues can make it now. All right, kids, have a great day. 
Um, I hope to uh, see you in September. I don't know, most of you. All right. See ya.